going to call the meeting of the Hoyoke City Council's Finance Subcommittee to order. Uh, present committee members at the moment on my right is City Councilor at Large Michael Sullivan. On my left is City Councilor at Large Peter Tallman. And my name is Joe McGivern, Chairman of the Finance Committee, also City Councilor at Large. Uh, Councilor McGee will be joining us shortly. And Councilor Lately Leahy is in a family commitment, but with a possibility of joining us in a little bit. Uh, we have an agenda this evening, uh, just a reminder, not just to the committee members, but to everybody, that this is uh, the June 11th meeting of the, Holyoke, of the Finance Committee, and next Tuesday is the June 19th meeting of the Holyoke City Council. Uh, we have what we believe before us are all requests and for appropriations and transfers that would, would finish out the uh, fiscal year, fiscal year 2018. And as most people, I think, know, a schedule has been put forward for budget hearings for the beginning to review the budget for the beginning of fiscal year 2019. The budget has to be ready before or on July 1st, and this uh, budget 2018 needs to be uh, completed and balanced by uh, June 30th. So most of what we're doing the past couple of weeks pertains to that in mind, but at the same time to some very important issues that are before us. Uh, with that in mind, the uh, item number one is the acceptance of previous minutes. We did receive copies of the May 14th, 14th meeting. Yeah. Is there any thoughts? We only received them today. On table, where do you want to? Yeah. I mean, I read you to read to them, or I read through them. I did. Yeah. I'll, I'll make a motion to accept the uh, minutes for the motion, a second, May 14th. Motion made a second to accept the minutes from May 14th. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? So moved. Our second item, uh, Mr. McManus, if you could come forward, please, is an order filed under my name that the appropriation by transfer the sum of $42,500 from tree, tree Climber in the DVW budget known as forestry to contract forestry. Uh, motion to take off the table for discussion. Don't move. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Michael, you have a request before us. Would you uh, just run through it? So this is a, a follow-up to the previous request of transfer of funds into the uh, tree removal service from the tree climber position. The tree climber position wasn't filled this, uh, this year. Uh, and the money was taken from the other services at the um, budget time last year. So we have, a, we have a number of trees in the city that need to come down. And uh, through this transfer, we would have the funds to hire Asplen to come out and, and do some work. Uh, we submitted a list of uh, trees that we, we know of that have been submitted by uh, city councilors, by residents. Um, and also the, that the uh, city forester has observed that our public trees that should come down. Uh, with, with that money, uh, we should be able to get about five weeks worth of uh, services. Um, and we'll, we'll put a good dent in, in the current list that we have. Mike, would you have a, a rough idea of translating that into how many trees? I know it's, they come in all different sizes. Uh, they do. So we have, uh, you know, there's 65 locations. Uh, a number of these have more than one tree at each location. Um, but with the, uh, the the five weeks, we should be able to get uh, through, say, at least number 40 on this on this list. That sounds more than fair. Are there any questions from the committee? Councilor Tom. Thanks, Mike, for coming down and getting that, that list of the uh, trees that are needed to be taken care of. I know it's, we've been working on this for a number of years. Uh, when, when would they um, start with this transfer? When would they actually start cutting trees down? Is it the new fiscal year? Or? It would be in the new fiscal year, yeah. Um, but it, I'd, I'd say within six weeks or so, they should be able to mobilize and uh, get into the city and start doing work. Okay, and do they, um, when they get out there, do they use uh, just one truck? They have a team? They do. They have a team. They have uh, their lifts. They have um, chippers and, and other, you know, facilities to do the work. 
Okay, and when, when you put this out as like a, a bid, do they just um, say this is how many will do? Do you like it a contract did. with them? So it was, uh, there was a services bid two years ago. Uh, they were the low bidder, uh, and the bid was based on an hourly rate. Uh, so we're, we're coming to the end of the second year, and we're going to exercise our option to renew it for one more year. Uh, so we would, that would be our third third year, and then you know next year we would go back out to bid. To bid, okay. And the last question: Are you are you seem to be fairly satisfied with the work they're doing? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, they they do great work. Uh, um, you know they can take down the the big monster trees that we can't take care of in house, either because we don't have the equipment or the time. Right. Okay. Thank you, Councilor Sullivan. Oh, Peter. Peter asked, asked my question. Okay. Uh, President, with this, uh, not on the committee, but City Councilor uh, Ward 5, Linda Bacon, way over to my right, and to my left, City Councilor David Bartley, Ward 3. There was uh, one comment by Jim Lee a while ago about a guardrail damaged out in Jones Point. Uh, I did talk with John Tuig about that, and the tree came down on its own. So the, uh, the crew that was observed out there was probably a DPW crew taking care of the tree on the ground. But it wasn't, a, it, wasn't a, it wasn't a contractor and it wasn't us taking a tree down and damaging city property. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else for our DPW superintendent? If not, the motion on the floor is to approve the transfer of $42,500. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Passes three to nothing. Thank you, Mike. If we could uh, suspend rules and take up items three and four together. So, so move. Suspend the rules. Those in favor? Any opposed? Items three and four pertain to uh, the same uh, same project. Item three is a communication from the mayor regarding a vote to authorize additional fundings for the required feasibility study for the middle school project that we are aware of ongoing. And there's an attached member to that. And also item number four was an order that goes back to uh, March of uh, 2018 introduced by Councilor McGee that the city council invite Margaret Woods to the finance committee to give us the update on these projects. Uh, we got communications, late communications, after the agenda was put together from the mayor's office. Uh, Devin Sheehan contacted me through from the school committee, and on behalf of, I think, our administrative assistant has some contact with Margaret Woods. Uh, this vote cannot or should not take place uh, until sometime in August due to some logistical issues with the state. Um, although it's an important vote to get it, this is the uh, money that most times we qualify for 80%. Um, reimbursement if we were to put the money up front at this point in time that would uh, jeopardize or maybe even no um, nix out our uh, reimbursement so they're asking us to uh, to wait on on the vote um, I, I, I took it upon myself to say there's no need to have discussion this evening um, because we're going to have the same discussion when uh, Margaret Woods comes before us and when we have the uh, getting ready to take that vote. Right now, the projected date is sometime in August. I'll keep everybody informed. With that in mind, if there are any questions, if not, the chair would ask for a motion to table. Motion to table items. Motion made second to table four. items three and four. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So moved. Uh, item number five, we do have the assessors with us. I'm going to ask them to be patient because the maker of the order is in flight and she should be here momentarily. Okay, that would be uh, Councillor Valentine. So, anybody here from the police department? I see a lot of the other people here from that fire department over there. I like that. The police department must be out, you know, using up all the overtime and. Uh, Project, uh, what do we call it this, this year? Fast and Furious. Fast and Furious, yeah, yeah. Fast and furious the way they spend overtime, Bellamy. Um, okay. we, we, have, we have two items. Uh, one, we do not need 
the uh, item number seven, if we could go to that. Well, should I uh, take off the table item number seven? So moved. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? So moved. <clears throat> item number seven came in late filed. I'm, I'm saying that loudly to our city auditor. Uh, late filed, and the city council decided just to put it directly into committee. This is the item. It's from... I apologize, let me read it quickly. It's an order to make a transfer from the patrolman's salary, $5,150.59 to injured on duty, $5,159. This is the routine. Every pay period uh, we have, or every moment in time when anyone goes on injured on duty, our firefighters or our patrol officers, this transfer has to take place. It's the same dollar figure because it's just, the salary doesn't change, just comes out of a different line item. So I don't think there are any questions. The chair, will, if there isn't, the chair will entertain a, a motion, motion to approve. Motion to approve the transfer uh, from patrol to injured on duty. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? So moved. Anybody here from the law department? Seeing nobody. Brian, was the law department asked to be here today? Yeah. Did they say they would be here? They didn't respond. They didn't respond. I'm stalling because we saved almost the whole evening for the uh, the contract and the, the monies that are associated with the firefighters contract, just being the second meeting for that. We need to get into the uh, the, the uh, options that we have before us, but I anticipate the discussion being a little bit longer. Um, item 13 is, Bellamy, are you familiar with the assistant solicitor and pay associate solicitor being transferred into education, training, office supplies, in-state travel, dues and subscriptions, and litigation? Not really. It, okay. it appears to me that they need some more money in those... Uh, expense accounts and so they're taking money from accounts uh salary accounts where they have ec extra money because they haven't they've either had open positions this year or haven't hired everybody that they need uh so the the positions weren't um you know fully the money wasn't fully used but i don't i can't tell you exactly why they need money in education and training or office supplies other than okay they're running low i no, i appreciate that and i understand i and i do would anticipate there will be more than one question about these items um, and being this is the last committee meeting before the end of the year meeting next Tuesday, I'm not too sure what options we have. Can they be possibly taken out on a, a meeting night if they were here? And we we can remove it from committee, from committee. if they wish yeah. to come in. And, uh, Since it may not be another opportunity before the end of the year, right? Yeah. <coughs> Otherwise, the transfer is not going to happen. Got 30 seconds to get in here. Item number five, introduced by Councillor Valentine. Item number five is ordered that the assessors come in and explain their assessment process, how they we we just live to take care of Ward Four, yeah. how they determine values, growth, residential, and personal property. A fine order introduced by the good city councilor, Josie Valentine, who's now joined us. And uh, Josie, I think I did say Josie, it forewarned me she'd be here a little bit late. We appreciate that warning. Uh, but Tony, Deborah, if you want to come in, um, the show is yours. 
And then we will turn it over to the maker of the order. That's, yep, that's the agenda. Will you, before you start, we, we've had, and maybe not with Councilor Valentine, but we've had uh, the assessors over the years and many times, and I know there's a couple questions I'd like to ask, but we, we cannot get in, we have to be very general. We cannot get into names, specific properties. There's a, there's a severe conflict of interest because we appoint the assessors, especially when we're dealing with abatements, even the potential abatements. But understanding how property is valued, is assessed, I think is important because the average person out there, when they go to sell or buy a house, they see an appraised value, which is not always the assessed value. And there's a reason for that. It is, but we're gonna turn over the show to you and then we'll have our maker of the order. Yeah, it's, it's, it's mostly driven for single families, is driven by sales. So whatever sales, arm's length sales, that are for a certain year, for calendar year, like 2016, are driving prices for 2018. Um, we have deeds that we get every month from the registrar of deeds. And I mean, I brought one month with me you can look them over. Um, and you can hand them out. Um, we scrutinize all those deeds. Also, Debbie goes on uh, the MLS listings for all the pictures and listings by the real estate brokers, and we go through those also. Every sale that we do, it's at arm's length, has to be sent to Department of Revenue in Springfield, um, where they scrutinize those sales also. And if they come back with problems on a certain sale, we'll further investigate what goes on. Um, public is always welcome to call us, come in, see and ask about a property, ask about their property, ask about other relating properties, and we're always willing to have people in. Um, sometimes properties slip through the cracks, per se, if a permit's not taken or they do work inside that has not been permitted correctly. But we do kind of catch up if they were to sell the property. So once they sell the property, if it's on MLS, then we're gonna catch a lot of stuff that wasn't you know, out forward with permitting process. Um, um, we do uh, permits every year. We have about, what, 13, 13 1,500 permits this year, and those myself and Debbie go out on every year. Um, along with the sales, you can see there's a, there's a significant amount of sales, that's just for April. So every sale is then put in for the correct field card, and then we'll, we're actually going out on sales from 2017 for the values for 2019. Um, as far as growth is, any new personal property that is obtained is part of new growth. Any business residential add-ons are part of new growth. If you had a house that was part, you're redoing the whole house. It's not necessarily new growth, but it would just be added on to the tax roll for the next year because it's already an existing structure. So the state allows us to have for add-ons, porches, uh, new rooms, new extensions of businesses, and um, commercial and industrial. So I'm, there's, there's a million factors that go into what we do. And we try and do the best. If we, our abatements have been down over the last 10 years, probably we're down to what? Yeah, so you might 48. Okay. okay. Yeah. So we're down to like 40 this year. So, I mean, that's a reflection on the work that our office has done to get our values, you know, better. Um, there might be a discrepancy with a, with a homeowner or a business person. We'll try and do our best to accommodate them. Um, they might not always agree with what we have for them and 
the onus is always on the taxpayer to prove us wrong. So, you know, appraisals from banks, um, maybe they have sales that they think are more in line with what we have, and if they can show us that, inspections always help. We can go in and do an inspection, and we know what we're looking at, and we can do that, and, you know, it doesn't take more than 15 minutes. So we're going to go and do all those properly and, you know, try and make the best judgment that's best for the city. Our main goal as assessors is to be sure that we're assessing everybody fairly for what they have. And all of our, everything we do is governed by the state, by the Commissioner of Revenue. There's rules and guidelines and everything that are set forth and everything we have to do to follow to come up with these assessments and values. We got you the, you know, the certification standards and that's sort of, since the ongoing, you, you're allowed to do um, interim adjustments and ever since it was about 13 years ago, you're allowed instead of waiting three years. Now the certification standards are five years. So we're on a three year again for this, for this upcoming because they want to make sure the cycle is the same for um, the communities with the Department of Revenue. Um, I did get you, you know, a couple of handouts also for your, for you. So. It's on, it's, it's ongoing every day, you know. I mean, we're out taking pictures of new properties. We're out uh, measuring all new pro buildings, properties, and you know, just last week, we, you know, we added the the rest of the Dan O'Connell property, the new building, and there was a property that went from um, exempt to taxable. So that's like 3.5 million just in value for those two properties, which will increase our tax base. So there is good things, and our sales are going up for for next year for 19. I mean, it, it might not be what everybody likes, but according to sales that you see, everything, you know, they, they publish those in the paper and they're always in uh, registry of deeds, it's public records, but um, every sale that we have in there is for the whole month. So it's even family sales, which we don't really care about. We want the arm's length sales and that's right. what drives our single family. So the assessment sale ratios we have for 2017 sales are what's going to drive up the values for 2019. Yeah. Councilor Allen. Um, thank you, and uh, I, I had texted Councilor McGivern to let him know I was going to be here probably closer to 645. I just drove back from New York City, um, which is why I'm in my summer attire, and uh, we had a great um, parade yesterday, uh, the Puerto Rican parade in, in New York City was yesterday and the communities of Holyoke and Springfield were honored and um, I worked very closely and, and hard with, uh, with our Springfield uh, colleagues and we had 400 people representing Holyoke and Springfield down Fifth Avenue so it was, uh, it was great. So um, I hear it was 40 blacks and you look very refreshed. Well thank you, that's because I stayed the night. <laughs> Um, so that's that's why I'm late is because I, I knew I was going to be driving right from New York. But um, so thank you for for waiting. So you know I I filed this order um, as I said before because I had had a number of, of folks approach me and kind of ask about the process, ask about you know there were some specifics and I obviously I'm not going to get into anything that's identifiable, but um, you know kind of the generic questions of if there's you know parcel A and then two lots down there's parcel B and they're you know pretty much identical um, you know why are the values not the same how does this all come through um, so that was one question kind of the 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 equalness or the fairness of that piece um, and then the other piece was um, you know if were were properties being undervalued or overvalued and and again just kind of throughout the same theme of of uh, fairness 
And so, <clears throat> so I wanted to kind of have the opportunity to have this conversation here. I know that I can call you both at any time and, and kind of ask specific questions, but um, I thought it was important to kind of have it in this forum so that if other colleagues had similar questions or different questions, uh, that we could have that, that opportunity. So, um, so I appreciate the, the initial rundown um, that you've shared with us. And, uh, you know, and, and like I said, I know that specifics, we can always um, contact you all directly, but um, I think it's, you know, it's valid questions that folks have, especially if their um, pockets are being impacted. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, we're all about, we want to make sure that, that we're looking at, at the revenue that we are getting that, you know, like what you just said right now about properties being on the tax rolls that weren't before. I mean, obviously that's, that's good news for yeah. us. We need all the revenue we can um, as we approach our budget conversations. And so, um, so I appreciate, you know, um, you guys coming in and, and kind of explaining that. Um, I guess one of my questions is, you know, you said that the public can always come and, and ask questions and request, um, you know, that the process be reviewed, the inspections. Um, what is, is all of this in writing in a place where I can direct folks to, you know, what the process would be, what it entails? Um, Mm -hmm. we, we have do. a lot of information in our office, a lot okay. of handouts for people for having questions on how their property is assessed, mm -hmm. like SM2 close, That's okay. um, how it's assessed, what type of exemptions and everything are available. There's a lot of literature we have to give to people. Okay. And we're always available to sit down and talk to somebody. And we would prefer people to call us and come in and sit down with us and talk to them about their property before they get to the point where the following year they have to file for abatement. Mm -hmm. Because it may be something we can look at beforehand and discuss with them and rectify before it gets to that point. But a lot of times when homeowners come in to see us, they're complaining about, well, my house here and my neighbor's house, they're so different. Yep. And we always tell people the first thing you want to do is to compare an apple to an apple. Mm -hmm. You can't compare a cape to a ranch, things mm -hmm. like that. But a lot of people's values are different even if you're having similar houses because people over time do updates to their house, new roof, new windows. That changes your depreciation factor mm -hmm. of your house and makes your house have a higher value. Um, your neighbor may have a finished basement, a finished attic, an extra bathroom, redid mm -hmm. the kitchen, have different type of flooring. All those factors are taken into account to build the value on a house. Mm -hmm. So when they come in to ask questions and ask for, for the process to be reviewed, is it, I mean, would you call it, I mean, I'm trying to think about layman's terms to explain it to our constituents. I mean, would you consider it, is it like an appeal process? I mean, well, they, they, they do have the abatement process, mm -hmm. but anybody's welcome to come in and we can check their house out. Yeah, it's we'll no go to problem. anybody's house, set up an appointment. We'll it takes us appointment. two to five minutes to walk through someone's house to see what's inside, what components they have. Okay. So that We're that answers. That. Thank you. So that answers the piece about the the homes. Yeah. Um, what about the empty lots? That question about if they're similar lots and they're pretty much on the same block. We did have a um, we did have a, a similar situation last a couple of weeks ago, and we remedied it. Mm -hmm. And it was um, it was a miscalculation for a, um, for a zoning issue. Mm -hmm. So, so one how one lot was on one block and one was on another, but it didn't meet the the uh, requirements the for frontage square footage square footage square footage and re requirements. But it frontage. was a pre-existing pre lot that had something built on it before. We work closely so with a not, lot of other departments. So it had not been shifted from something yeah. from from the assessment of something being built on it to an empty parcel. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so those are my questions for now, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Are there other questions or thoughts? Councilor Bartley. Yeah, I, I just want to clarify something. Um, I heard the councilor say that she could ask specific questions, but I, I just, I thought the chair said, I mean, oh, when, when people come into you, they can ask specific questions about their own property. But can somebody, a, a third party, ask a specific yes. question about their property? Yes, all of our <clears throat> all of our property information is public information. Yeah, you so. can come in and get your neighbor's property record card and review their details if you wish. Yeah. 
Okay, and, and what, what kind of specific questions would, would be? Well, the, you know, the, the one, one of the main reasons for abatements is because you're not valuing the property the same as of, of a similar house in a similar neighborhood. Well, this person has this value and I have that value, so how can that be? So that's, mm -hmm. it, it, it's, it's a legitimate argument. It can be an argument. And they've, I've heard those in appellate tax board before. Mm -hmm. So it is, it's, it's more specific about another house. But, you know, if we haven't been in that house or you haven't been in in a while, the, the person filing for abatement has to know that going in, that mm -hmm. I can't go in and check that house without, you know, right. you know all the information that I would but need. But would a... Would a an elected official ask you about a specific valuation? Well, they can ask about yeah, they valuations, can ask. Yeah. yeah. They can say so-and-so was complaining about their value and their house was the same as this one, and yeah. we wondered why, and we might pull out the record cards. Find something. And person A may be saying, we have the same house, so how come my taxes are higher than person B when he has a deck and he has a pool? We might not know he has a deck and a pool if he didn't take out permits to add those to his house right. because we can't see every property every single year. Yeah. So I mean, it's, it, it's a legitimate question. I mean, when you get down to the specifics for abatements, those are off limits. So what will, what will be an example of that, Tony? Well, I mean, there's certain information for abatements. It's, it's just not public information. You can, you can um, public the public record for the abatement is there but the information on their abatement uh, application is specific it's not it's not a public record right, All right thank you any other any other questions for the assessors any other thoughts with that in mind uh, Councilor Valentine do you feel the order has been complied with um, I do you said you had a question at the beginning did you And no, you know, <laughs> I, I, I did. The other thing is, uh, I have a question I can't ask publicly. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I don't the think other, I can even ask it privately because I just heard about it today. But the other thing is, um, we're working with uh, Eileen Pooler to upgrade. Um, I mean, our website, mm -hmm. it's funny because our website has it's been locked. screwed up and it, we can't make changes to it right now. Mm -hmm. But it's the only one in the whole mm -hmm. system. <laughs> Yeah. So we've wanted to do some updates and, you know, information like that. And, yeah, yeah, I know, mean, and I think, you know, you know if, if there's... More information. I think for, it's great that there's yeah. handouts in the office and everything, but, you know, we're, we're in an era where yeah. everything is just so no. web-based um, that, you know, if there's forms that people can kind of download or print from home, right. um, you know, just kind of like a you know assessment 101 yeah. you know just kind of a, a rundown anything that that I think can come from the office in the sense of access for the public I think would be helpful because then it, there could be uh, consistency among our message to our constituents because I know I mean I'm I get the calls I'm sure yeah. several of my other colleagues do too and we always want to make sure that we're giving out the most updated information so anything that can be I think <laughs> kind of web-based right. I think would be ideal um, and also you know I, I, I wish that pretty much every department uh, in City Hall would have information in, in both English and Spanish and I know that's you know that's my wishful thinking but um, maybe one day we'll get there um, and, and so because again I, I think that when we look at people that may have questions um, it, it, it could include many folks that perhaps are not even reaching out to certain offices because they're not sure even how to start. So anything that could be uh, web-based I think would be helpful. And, and maybe just kind of a assessment 101, yeah. like the rundown that you just gave us here, um, could answer a lot of questions. Maybe it actually reduces the volume of contacts you guys see. We've, we've had a lot of less contact with Frasers and everything because of the website. Good. Mm -hmm. yeah. Appraisal and uh, mapping system has been great. Mm -hmm. So. I mean, there's a ton of information on there. So I thank you for coming in and, and uh, explaining a little bit better and, and in a more uh, specific way what, what we 
can con communicate to our constituents, and I, I would be fine with uh, the order being complied with if that's what the committee wishes. Thank you. We do have a new question, though, from Councillor okay. Sullivan first. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thanks. Tony, um, you told us now, so 2017 looked pretty good, and that's in the 2019 budget that we're looking at now. In the first six months here of 2018, I've seen a lot of properties selling above um, well above the assessed value, and I've seen quite a few properties now sell for above the asking price. They've actually been bidded up. Bidding wars, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, can you give us some insight what this might hold for 2020, both from the tax side, but for an opportunity for uh, some r relief in the uh, in the rate also? Based, based on the, the 17, we, me and Debbie were trying to, you know, Put a hold on it or whatever, but you know it's 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 going to be close to two percent, or maybe two and a half percent for single families, and then for the next year it'll probably be even another two and a half percent. So if 2018 yeah. finishes the way it started, they'll yeah. go up again for 2020. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, like you know, you see sales in the paper and everything, and they've Holyoke has been pretty good I mean just that month right there I think every every arm's length sale was above the assessment price so and uh, what what does that translate into additional revenue well it's it's very good for the city so hopefully it'll work out and we'll have some extra money for this year so we're trying to get those done for uh, early September middle of September so we'll have a better hold on that Thanks. Any other questions? Councilor Tom. Yeah. Thanks for coming down, and thanks, uh, Josie, for bringing this up, because uh, a lot of people are, you know, want to know how the process works, and it's it's really good. Um, how how often do you do you get out to assess homes? Is it every two or three years to certain? If the state's required uh, ten years cyclical. So, I mean, with our permits, we're out, and the sales, we're probably close to two thousand a year out of the 10,000 parcels. So, I mean, a lot of them are just land parcels, which we don't have to go out on. But between sales and permits, that's close to 2,000 parcels every year. Okay, and do, was there, uh, did you contract somebody else to do some work at one time that went out actually and did? Yeah, we, that we still, have did to. the 10 year cycle, but mm -hmm. with, with MLS, I think the state is a little less lenient on that or you know pushing you for it because with like so Josie said photos. technology helps you out so much mm -hmm. and you know with MLS we're checking we don't th that's a virtual tour of a house when it sells so you, you don't even have to go in the house you have every picture of every room and property right online so and that's how you can determine yeah, it's way, it's, mm -hmm. it, and it's great for us you know right it's less legwork and, and you stated too also earlier if, if somebody is say within the same block and have similar homes like say ranches you could actually if somebody comes in for abatement you go out and say well this is what you have in your home right and that's what the price is going for and right. so you wouldn't qualify for the abatement that's correct I and mean, then or you may find out that there's something built in right there's something we don't know about. don't know about it that's why we love people when they call dump. us if they want us to come look at the house we will go and, and then do, you, do they have to give you like a time, you know, like set up an appointment or something? Yeah. Go anytime. Oh, I've gone, we've both gone on Saturdays and Sundays mm -hmm. to properties, so it doesn't yep. matter or after hours. We even go to open houses when we yeah. can. <laughs> yeah, that seems like something would be yeah. Yeah, interesting to do. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I appreciate that. Thank you. Councilor oh, Barley. Yeah. Tony, just, uh, just follow up what you said to yeah. Councilor Sullivan. So mm -hmm. you'll be ready with your valuations and when? Trying to get them in like middle of September. Mm -hmm. Usually that's when we are ready, yeah. is middle or end of September. Yeah. Right. So w what's generally the holdup why, from preventing from sending a tax rate prior to well, we've the, had the middle of December? We do, we do our part and it's done. <laughs> and the rest of the work is other. Well, you have some other. budget. You got some budget stuff, so you got to balance the budget first. So. And that's sometimes, I mean, we had some problems last year. We all know what those problems were. So. But, but in large part, it's, 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 it's the assessor's office getting us to a point where we can understand the numbers so we can balance the budget. So if that's running in September, 
I mean, I don't know if Bellamy's been here for so oh, long. No, now. Bellamy. I don't know. I mean, hopefully we'll have another assessor at the, yeah, some I mean, point. Uh, I said assessor. Depends sorry. on the uh, At some point, not no, because we respect everything yeah. Bellamy's done for us, but but we've got to get a full time auditor on board. Um, nevertheless, um, I know we had the delay last year, but I'm hopeful we can yeah. instead of this last minute no, rush no. in December. I know. We hope I mean, so too. I, 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 Perfect world, we'd all be done in September, you know. Ideally, you we'd like the, everything to be done the beginning of November so the tax rate could be set by the middle of November and we Full wouldn't November, be stuck right. in a crunch or a rush or yeah. have problems. So, so that, that's, that's something that it would be great if you could, you know, we if you push, can, can you communicate we'll push that to city council? Yeah, you know, we always put our communication out there. As soon as our values are certified, we send this communication out so everybody knows that our end has been done. And you communicate, you send it to the clerk who sends it to us, yeah. correct? We, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Any further discussion? <clears throat> yeah, I was right here. Yes. Yes. Chair, I'll a motion that this order has been complied with and Mo report that back to the full city council. Motion that the order has been complied with. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? So moved. Uh, joining us prior to this uh, discussion is our president and member of the committee, City Councilor Todd McKee. Um, we're going to, if, if the committee would uh, appease me, we're going to skip over item number six. Hopefully, uh, Sergeant Hart will be here shortly. Uh, I did golf with Sergeant Hart in the Napoli tournament this morning, and neither one of us talked about the, uh, the meeting tonight wasn't on my mind at 7 o'clock this morning, and I guess it's not on his mind at 7 o'clock this evening. But the chief did tell me he was sending uh, John in, so I hope, I hope he'll be here shortly. But with that in mind, outside of item 13, our next items on the agenda, which would include items 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12, all pertain to the Hoyoke Firefighters uh, contract, which is before us. Uh, chair would ask that we would take up each of these items together for discussion. We would actually be voting on them separately as we go along, but discussion will be, I think, uh, inter, uh, intertwining throughout the evening. Make a motion to take up items 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12 as a package. So moved. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Um, as stated, the, uh, one week ago, we held both the city solicitor who was invited in this evening uh, before us are members of our, our fire, fire department, including the president of the union and other officers, and we discussed the merits of the uh, negotiated contract, uh, both from the city's point of view and from the firefighters' point of view. Uh, new this evening we received uh, since then is from our uh, city solicitor is a, a timeline of the impacts of this contract on not just this year, but we know the impact of this year is $142,100, but it also includes the impacts in fiscal years 2019 and 2020. And that's here for informational purposes, but certainly part of the discussion. We then have three orders, and I, I think, they, well, they don't speak for themselves. The, uh, the, the Each of them is, well, two of them are in the amount of 142000 $52.84. One is from stabilization, one is from free cash. Uh, these, these would be, put, be putting two options before the city council next week as to how they could pay for the, uh, the contract itself for the impact on f this fiscal year, 2018. The third order, at whatever is appropriate, is the order that we had received uh, two meetings ago, two city council meetings ago, which uh, wrongfully kept or, or inadvertently put the fire chief's pay and the deputy chief's pay in the transfer. Uh, the, the fire chief's contract, even though this is related to the firefighter's contract, would have to be a separate, uh, a separate appropriation. And the deputy chiefs are still negotiating their contract. And at this point in time, there is no request before the city council for the deputy chiefs. So this evening, we are only acting on the firefighters, at the moment, firefighters contract. We have uh, two options that would, uh, would, be, would be a possibility, before, oh, three options, but two options in terms of transfers that are before us this evening. Um, 
everybody was present here on this committee. Uh, I think Councilman B. McGee is caught up to parts of it, but Todd, would there be any questions you have on the contract or any thoughts you have on the contract that you might, we fortunately don't have our city solicitor, but we do have our, our union uh, officers here. Okay. And the chair would open up this for discussion. Is there any discussions or any questions? Okay. One thing I do have to add before we start taking votes is is the um, two things actually. One is as, as stated at the last meeting, and, and I know we had a late meeting last Tuesday. Um, we now have more requests for free cash than we have free cash. However, that remedy is is within our reach if we deem that appropriate to what we wish to do. Um, the second thought I just wanted to share, um, I was talking to some of our firefighters out in the hallway last, uh, last week and, or last Tuesday, and I explained a, an appropriation uh, whether it's a transfer or whether it's it's a new 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 budget appropriation or, or free cash appropriation, is by state statute requires a simple majority of the city council. However, our charter requires that in any transfer on any appropriation, we have two readings, not on the same night. So, and when this uh, these items come out of committee, the city council has to pass the first reading. If there's two thirds of the city council on that same night, they can adopt the appropriation if that's what the what the uh, vote is. If there's less than two thirds, but there might be a simple majority, there's an option to table and wait until the next meeting to uh, to adopt the the appropriation with the simple majority, which is what is required by the state, which is the the most important vote. I, I did fail to say one thing that doesn't apply for stabilization. Stabilization under all votes is a two-thirds vote of the of the full city council, just so we uh, we know that up front. Joe. Councilor McGee. For free cash, I know we have legal fees, the phone system. What else is listed for free cash requests? That's it, just those two? Um, laid, laid on the table of the city council is the $75,000 for the law department that we haven't acted on yet for outside council. Um, the IT, which is $79,000, yep. which is now from free cash, the stabilization order was, was defeated, if I remember correctly. There was a question, Bellamy, but we haven't seen it, of the fire department looking for $40,000 for... That's been resolved. Oh, I'm sorry, you did tell me that. Okay. And then, Bellamy, was there one more item, I think? MD, 50,000. Okay. And what's free cash at currently? 260. I think it's about 236, Joe. You have the sheet. I, yes, I do. If you give me one second, and I was all ready for this. And I, I'm not as quick as Councillor McGee with this free cash stuff because I'm, I'm learning. Everybody does it a little bit different. I understand. Okay. Um, we, we know the history. We, we had one million, a little over five, one point five million, a little bit more. We used immediately one point three, a little bit more, to stabilize the budget. That left two hundred forty-six thousand six thirty-nine thirty-one. We've approved one free cash transfer this year since free cash was certified for ten thousand dollars. Requests for spending beginning last week was over three hundred forty-six thousand dollars. Um, with a potential balance, if we passed them all, of, of less than zero, which is what we, what we have to be careful of. So what we have pending is the 75,000 legal fees, the 79,000 phones for IT, the $50,000 for Mata de la Rosa, and then the contract of 142. And that would total 346 
$52.84 that would have to be the total votes we can take is 236, 63931. So we're looking to, to make up the difference, or not looking, but we can only approve the ones that will come to the total of 236, 63931. Audio has not failed you. We are in a moment of performing a mathematical equation to come up with a, a number that will tell us the magical number we have to cut. So you're at 236. Yeah. If you pass legal fees and phone fees, that's 154. You'll have 82,000 left, which then makes this contract for free cash moot. You can't, can't do it. If you vote for the contract at 142, you're down to 94,000 which then you have to deal with legal fees or phone. You can't do both. Uh, then you have MD in the mix, so, I mean, from my understanding of the rules, state law says you can't have more free cash requests than you have in the budget for free cash. So the dilemma here is you have given too many free cash requests, which is in violation of the rule. So we either, I mean, you have to get rid of some of them. Brian Smith told us this about four or five years ago when this issue came up, that you cannot have free cash request over the amount which is in there. We have done that now. So there's your dilemma. Some of these orders really are just out, outside of compliance now. Mr. Chairman? Councilor Bartley. Point of order, just to, to talk, talk, just explain the, the the criteria there, and if there's a source. I mean, I heard you say. Brian yeah, Smith. I got. I, 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 I don't mean to put you on the spot either. But I don't have the source, but I'll get it. I mean, okay. this this issue came up when Brian just had left, and there was a series of free cash requests, of which he called me and said, "You cannot do that. That you cannot have free cash over and above the amount which is allocated." So here, if you're at 236, we have a request for 346. Was that pursuant to state law? It was a state law that he was referencing. I just don't have it off the top of my head. But that, or what, or that what, issue what, has come up with us. So it, it, was, it wasn't a mass regulation, it was state law. It, it referred to a state law. But I'll, I mean, I didn't have a chance to call him today. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Any further discussion? Chair Alaska, the committee wishes to entertain anything new from our firefighters local. Make a motion. Or make a motion. Yeah. Um, I'll make a motion to uh, approve the free cash transfer, one hundred forty-two thousand fifty-two eighty-four transfer to to pay the uh, the contract. items laid on the table, 75 and the 79 free cash yep. on the table for our next agenda. Which is I our, like that answer before you can even act on these, Joe. I just... Well, I, I appreciate that and I agree to you, but <clears throat> our next agenda is our last agenda. I go with the motion. I mean, I just... I'm just telling you, there's two items on the agenda. Tabled. Any 
if you want, if you want to. We have ones from stabilization. I'll take those up first, or no, I'll so make a motion. I mean, I'm just saying. All right, I'm do we have a dilemma that we have? That's oh, right, it is. It's a dilemma. I mean, I think we tried to vote the stabilization on the contract, and that didn't go through. Um, and I think we did it with the phone line right. last week. It was denied, right, at the meeting, the stabilization. So that's not going to happen. Brett Ryan's going to check it. <clears throat> Do you guys have anything you wanted to approach? Anything new? <laughs> Do you have any questions for what we're discussing? Councilor Barley. Uh, I would think that if Tom is right, would yeah, I talk to the mic? Yeah, you can talk to the mic. that Todd talked about but I would think if he's right then whatever the last submission I made is illegal and therefore has to be removed from your agenda I don't know whether it was Mata Della Rosa that would be Mata Della Rosa the, I don't know which one it was because I don't have them by date with me you've got them on the list but I think well, that renders it moot it's more than Mata Della Rosa because Mata Della Rosa is only 50,000 so it's going to be the last yeah, but two I'm saying maybe it's the last two then yeah. that have to come off the list but I, I like to see that law because I I understood what Todd is saying, and I always felt that that was Brian Smith's um, internal policy, which made a lot of sense because yeah. I think one year we did kind of uh, pass more than we had enough free cash for by a minimal amount of you know of dollars that we were able to to resolve. But this is not minimal; this is over a hundred thousand. Um, but Todd's going to find the law. I also forget our vote last Tuesday. We defeated one of the 79,000s, and I forget if it was the stabilization. I think we defeated that one, but yeah, I, forget. I think yeah. free cash did not pass either, and I don't know if we laid it on the table. I don't know if that vote carried. Well, while we're waiting, we can either recess or we could do a little bit of voting here. The chair would suggest that we take a vote on item number 12 and that we recommend to the city council to, uh, to deny item, tw uh, item 12. Again, item tw 12. Item 12 is, is the request for the money, uh, which is more, which includes the, uh, the fire chief and the deputy chief. I think I, think I explained it, that we, we, cannot, cannot. we cannot pass this item under any circumstances because they're not related. Okay, motion to deny number 12. Motion well, to second to uh, deny number 12. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So moved. One down. And item number 10, just for housekeeping, is the communication from our auditor, which is the, uh, we all have got copies, even though we did not receive it late filed. I think we all did get copies. And that uh, vote to receive late filed will be on the agenda this coming week. But for informational purposes, that we uh, received this and used it this evening for discussion. Item number 10, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So moved. Joe? Yep. Uh, Ms. Fe just a question. Bellamy, I don't think I received that memo. Uh, would, would you mind? And if I did, I apologize. Uh, that's fine. It, it might get lost in the shuffle. If you wouldn't mind just sending that memo, Bellamy. Give me my copy. I've got a copy here. Oh, wonderful. Mm. How do you beat that? Thank you, Bellamy. It's addressed to you. How do you beat that? <laughs> no wonder you didn't receive it. You asked for it. I got <laughs> it the next day. Oh, I there appreciate you go. that. Yeah. I, I, Councilor Reagan. So in my notes, I had it was a 7-5 vote on stabilization. Okay. That failed. That failed. Then I have over to the left, 
a note table, but it's a little confusing. But I think that's because we had to pull the cash transfer out of committee, so we didn't have it as an item on our agenda. Correct. So I think that's the one that I have noted as tabled, the cash transfer. Okay. So it's still the, the answer to the question then is it's still uh, one part of the free cash uh, request before us, which still goes I, over. I believe we have 75 for legal and 79 for this. Correct. Mm. Thank you. Thanks. And that's the best I can tell from my notes. <clears throat> While we're waiting for uh, our administrative assistant and um, Councilor McGee to come back. I, I'm just going to go on the record to say that I will be voting against um, stabilization. The reason I'm voting against stabilization is I do not believe under any circumstances it's appropriate to use stabilization dollars to fund a contract. Um, it has impacts that could be far more reaching than just the use of the monies because typically I'm, I'm one of the city councilors that's not afraid to use stabilization, but I try to set up and, and get the mayor and in the council to use them for items that are more of an emergency, more of one-time um, spending, and most important, will not be deemed as daily cost of operations, which the I believe the Wall Street people um, would, would look at that as any salaries as daily cost of operations. Mm -hmm. um, I realize it was pointed out to me that the only real request for stabilization is for this year at the moment, and that is true. But also, we are trying to, to balance, we're going to have to balance the budget that's coming in to, to some degree. So that I just wanted to go on record and state that. Um, free cash is a different story. I'm still open-minded, and if we get to it, I'll take and make a response to that. <clears throat> Councilor McGee, is there anything you wanted to add? Yeah, uh, it was confirmed that you, you cannot do that. They couldn't um, cite the actual code section, the actual Mass General Law, but... Uh, it was confirmed that it is part of the Mass General Law, and two, that DOR uh, would fire back on us and say that you can't do it as well. So, and, and the remedy? Well, it, it, I didn't ask for the remedy because it, it's you can't file orders in excess of free cash was the statement. So I guess one of the remedies would be if, you know, the first two came in, and there was free cash to allocate towards those two, you'd have to address those two, and anything that came in later, you'd have to, in essence, not address until you deal with the first two. Either you vote them up or vote them down, and then slowly back into your number. Okay, and then that makes sense. But part of the remedy would be we have to get these items to the full city council to make that decision. I, I understand, but you've, in essence, exceeded what you can do for free cash. I'm just telling you, we ran to this before and that's how we were told to deal. I, I appreciate that. It's important. I'm just trying to figure out how to do this evening, but more important, how to set us up for the final votes on next Tuesday. The, the last two we we're discussing in your absence with the auditor, the last two items that came in, one is not on the agenda tonight, but is in the, in the jacket, is the $50,000 one from Mata Della Rosa. So at the moment that that can stay there but the second one or the next one in line which is in both in the jacket and an item on the agenda this evening so to correct the city council receiving both those orders you know my suggestion is we give them back to the city council as we take votes on the orders that are before us Well, no, yeah, but, but yeah, they're I, here. I know what you're saying. I, I <laughs> you know, know what you're saying. We, we, we made a mistake, and they're here. I, I, I can appreciate not taking a vote this evening other than referring it back to the city council. But other than that, I'm not too sure how to resolve it. Um, maybe one way. Um, I'm just, I don't know if you can do it, but 
referred out of committee without a rec uh, without a recommendation. We've done that yes. with certain orders. Yes. Maybe that's one way around it. Yes. Then that way you can take it up on that night. So if you vote down, I'm not saying we are, but if you vote down legal fees and IT phone system, that opens back the door to be able to vote on this. Or if you vote for those two, then you're automatically saying that this will not come for free cash. So I, I, that, maybe that's one way of doing it. I think that's reasonable, and, and I think it gives us, all of us, the opportunity for choice next Tuesday, which is, I think, a, a reasonable goal in terms of the end of the year approaching so quickly. Um, Todd, we did vote on item number 12 just to uh, deny it. I'm going to record you as in denial. Yeah, no. Okay. And then we did receive uh, Bellamy's mm -hmm. communication because we used it this evening. The uh, that's that late file, but the email that we had that we used for uh, in future impacts this year and future impacts of this contract. Yeah, Mr. Chairman. Sit. Mr. Chairman. Councilor Bartley. Just I know you've already voted on that, but I didn't have it in front of me, so I, I just I'm just going to just going to state it for the record that the few if the, by by passing this the, the hundred forty two thousand dollars. For the retro raises, um, what I what I what I'm hearing from the auditor and what I'm hearing understanding from the city solicitor is, for FY19, that would impact the department's budget by nine hundred sixty-one thousand seven hundred dollars. So, so I, I would just suggest to you, <clears throat> just to keep that in mind when when we when we place our votes. Thank you. And, and that, that was really what the, 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 the financial, financial impact memo summarized. Did we read that into the record? Or? That's why no, it wasn't read into the record. Uh, I just, we, we just, uh, we, can, no, we voted I just, on it. I cited it, I didn't. No, no numbers were cited at that, at that time, but the in, in financial impact with uh, captains, lieutenants, firefighters, alarms, vacation buyback, sick buyback, longevity totals nine sixty one seven hundred for for FY nineteen. Bellamy, can I ask a question? Yes, sir. The potential impact in two thousand nineteen. You're telling us vacation, sick leave, buyback. What what purpose would that have to do for this contract? As I understand it, the, new, the, the way the contract was negotiated, the, the firefighters would be, get buybacks for, I'm going to say it's 10 days of sick day instead of the six days they have now, or maybe it's 10 instead of 5 or 12 instead of 7, but it's more sick day buybacks than, than is currently in place, and that has a value. The value is $220,000 more it's than this year. More Same thing with vacation buybacks and longevity. But this would be the estimated that, total. Those are the estimated costs that I got from the fire department. Okay, thank you. Do we Mr. Are... President. We... No objections, please. I might have one. Yes, sir. Um, a couple of things. I think that 900 is off. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, it's fine. I think the 900 is off. I know we do have a buyback, which does have an estimate to save $80,000 in overtime, too. Not everybody's going to cash in 10 days. That's up to 10 days we could cash in our vacation day. So that number's a little inflated. Um, the other buyback is guys retire, and that you have to pay no matter what. So, you know, we may have guys retire. Maybe the chief knows something I don't know. There is some retirements coming. So their sick time buyback is included in that. That, that was kind of my question. I didn't ask it because I forgot about the new, some of the new language in the contract. But, yes. But Bellamy, you're telling us this is direct, or you were told this is direct from the con from the contract. So that that's a question that we may have to look uh, a little bit a little bit deeper. And you understand, we we don't know if this includes retirements too, and if it does, there might be an impact on retirements, but not the full amount because retirement's going to take place anyways. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Councilor Bacon. So based on the other legal communication that we received. It appears if we accept this contract, we are de facto changing our residency law in the city based on the city solicitor's opinion, if I read it correctly. 
He's saying if we approve this contract, we are giving up our residency law for the city of Holyoke because the contract would supersede our law. Now, the other cities around us have residency ordinances which are enforced. And his letter states, if we approve this contract, our residency law is done, over. And I, I just, I think that should be known and not just buried in numbers in a contract. I think that's a huge issue. Again? President? Um, as far as I know, there's only one community around us that has a residency. They just negotiated it, and they got a 4% raise, the police from Springfield. F Springfield Fire got 2% on new hires. Other than that, I'm not aware of any mandatory residency to live in their towns, cities, whatever around us. Um, Ours. We negotiated. <laughs> Somebody negotiated out. That's up to the law department. You guys take it up with them. It was in our contract to live a reasonable distance away. We upped it to the 15 miles now. So we actually gave you a little better residency thing going on, going forward with this new contract, too. I don't know when it came out of your ordinance or the contract, but it's been in the contract. I've been on job 16 years. It's been in the contract like that as long as I've been on job. So, I mean, if they offer 4%, maybe guys would consider it. But that's what the city of Springfield paid for residency on one of the departments. Thank you. Councilor Bacon, anything else? Just and <clears throat> clarification, you know, it's, a, it's anybody and all our points are well taken. Part of the discussion, our vote is on the appropriation, not the contract. And that doesn't mean you can't vote against the appropriation because of what you just stated. That's your choice. You can. Yeah. But the only way we can defeat the contract is by not voting for the appropriation. And that could mean up or down, different reasons for yes or no. Um, I think I'm being asked to read into the record. I did read, and I think it goes without saying, the impact for this year is the 142-100. The impact for fiscal year 2019, excluding vacation buy and sick leave buybacks with longevity percentages, is 671-300. And then Councillor Bartley is adding those next three figures into it, which brings it well over $900,000, uh, closer to that $1 million MAC. Mark, and then the additional increase in 2020 would be another $104,200. And that's spread out through captains, lieutenants, firefighters, and the arms division. Mr. We do Chair have to, Mr. Chairman? Councilor Dahman. Yeah, I'm, I'm just wondering if we could take up, um, maybe take up item nine and uh, deny that that's a stabilization because I don't feel that's going to be a, a problem and I don't think anybody will be supporting that for this motion, contract motion is to uh, to vote on item number nine item number nine is the stabilization fund transfer of 142 52 84 to the fund the contract of captains lieutenants firefighters and alarms broken down appropriately for the same total figure on that motion, is there any further discussion? Um, I, I stated my piece. I will keep an open mind with everything that's come to light in terms of free cash and how we proceed next Tuesday. But I, at this moment, you know, do not believe stabilization is the answer. Is there anything, any other discussion? The motion on the floor then is that we recommend that the stabilization transfer be denied. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So moved. The suggestion of our president um, is to avoid to avoid having a uh, a clash or conflict with state law. Something that should not be in front of us by our own our mistake by receiving it is the 142 from free cash. In order to uh, to make any sense of this, because next Tuesday right now is our last scheduled meeting of for the fiscal year. We suggest that we send this back to the full city council without a recommendation uh, for their purview, if necessary. Second. Any discussion? We'll avoid that. I just questions I, though. Yeah, I just had a question because I 
brought that up for a, a vote from our committee to uh, approve the contract, the transfer. So are we changing it now? We're just going to send the, it out the, without the it? The issue isn't, isn't that vote, Councillor Tomlin. The issue is this order and the $50,000 order that is not on the agenda this mm -hmm. evening brought us over the amount well, of free cash that there was. We should not have received that, and we took action on the items that are tabled. The items that are tabled is that 75000 79,000, and we, we have to take action on those. Um, if we pass those, then we're not, you know, the full amount of the 142 we could not receive, and the 50,000. Um, I don't think we could receive either one of them. Which one? The Monte Del Rosa. We. I'm, I'm doing math in my head. Right. You know. Do I don't think we could act on either one. You refer to committee. No. We just haven't taken it up yet. So, no. so in other words, you don't want to we're, make a decision. What, you want to send it out without it. Is we yeah. should not be acting on this until without. we act on the ones that were here first. And okay. if we shoot down other items to find room for okay. this, then we can go forward. The, the magic number is, is that 109-413-53. Okay, that's, that's the overage right, that we right. are at counting the 142 and counting the $50,000. So it's not the total amount, but because we are already at the 236, 639, you know, pending. Pending, right. You know, we have to take care of those first. So we're just going to take all the transfers and just send them without. A well, only because next next week is the last. Is, oh, I know is that. It. I know that. Yeah. Know. So okay. we're going to put them in front of the city council. That we're going to have to act as a body. I would suggest on the seventy five and on the seventy nine, see if there's any other um, relief or any other uh, ways to resolve it from room one, and you know accordingly take the votes that we can. So you're saying between now and then there may be some type of transfer for those two items maybe to take care of them to give us enough money to well, they, they pass could. them off possible anything's possible okay yes Phil? Councilor Bartley Just before we vote uh, I don't know if we need to make a formal invitation or what I mean I, I am taking zero joy in this no joy whatsoever this is horrible so it would be nice if we had been a little smarter the last X years with our financial resources so we could pay the fire department what they deserve and what they've contract bargained for in good faith. But we are in a bind, in a terrible bind, unbeknownst to them. But it would be nice if maybe the chairman has to do it, maybe this council president has to do it, to make a formal invitation to the mayor to come before us next Tuesday. What are your priorities, Mr. Mayor? Let us know. Is it the firefighters? Is it Mata de la Rosa? Is it the law department? What is your priority? You are, as you remind us constantly, are the chief executive of this, of this city. You're the boss. So I appreciate so much, Bellamy. I know we've had pro uh, words over the course of time, but I appreciate all your help that you do. Bellamy is here you know, doing the best he can, but he's not, he's our appointment, point, appointee, allegedly, or his department is. Well, let's hear from the mayor. So, Mr. Chairman, Mr. President, why don't you make a formal invitation to the mayor? He can come up to the microphone. Tell us what is your priority. Do you want to pay the? You want to pay the guys? Do you want us to buy Mont Del Rosa? What, what do you want us to do? And then we can we can make a decision from there. But this is, I mean, you know, it comes it comes up, Mr. Chairman. It comes back to us always as the bad guys, the, the the mean city council. Why can't you just pay us? Well. It's, that's a rhetorical question. I'm not saying you have to answer that, but it's, uh, that's, it's the situation we've been, we've been placed in by votes that, yes, both, votes we've taken, but priorities from the mayor. I mean, let us know, Mr. Mayor, what direction do you want to head, head? Do you want us to pay the firefighters? Well, then let's do it. Let's pay them out of free cash, and we'll figure out what we can do from there. I will, as I caution you, that I mean, maybe it's not the 961, and I'm getting this from the auditor. I'm not make, I'm not making the number up, Mr. Chairman. I mean, it's right here, so you have it in front of you, and you, we should we should forward that to the to the union. Uh, or, or I'll forward it to him. I'll give it to copy anytime you want. I'll give it so so we're working from the same sheet of paper. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Councillor Bartley. Point well taken. Any other discussion? Motion on the floor is to refer back to the City Council for reasons stated, but with no recommendation at this time. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So moved. <clears throat> we have two items left. We do not see Sergeant Hart. That item that John was supposed to be here, or for someone from the police department, is from stabilization, 275874 to capital outlay motor vehicles. This will be the police department's uh, request. Uh, the mayor is requesting to buy six, six. six of the SUVs. SUVs. Thank you. These glasses, I need to get these glasses up another magnifying level here, I think. <laughs> um, <we've laughs> um, we, I think we've had this discussion on an annual basis in terms of cruisers in the police department and how far behind we are. We did see in a request for more money for, for the, mechanical, the mechanical division that takes care of the cruisers, and we do know there's been some accidents. I'm not suggesting we can act on it, but there's no questions we could act on it. There's also the issue of stabilization. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. Is there any discussion or any vote? Asking for a vote because I would just ask a table and accept next Tuesday is it. Will he be in uh, tonight? No. If there's any questions, we'll get answers for the questions. All right. Um, I, I, as I stated, I, I golfed with, the chief told me, John, he, he was unavailable, but he would send Sergeant Hart. I golfed with Sergeant Hart this morning, and at 7 o'clock, neither one of us discussed this. And at 7 o'clock tonight, you know, the meeting's on my mind, but I guess it's not on my golf partner. Well, I that was for the Denapoli tournament, which I think yeah. is, you know, it's a 19 tournament for in memory of John Denapoli, who was shot down here in Hoyoke. Well, my concern is if we need the vehicles and um, if it's unusual to take it from stabilization, but if we don't do this this week at a meeting next week, then we're waiting until what, September? August or September? I, I, actually, yeah, right. well, that's what I mean. It's unusual to take it out of stabilization. For except Bellamy, is is this request exclusive for fiscal year 2018, or could this be done next year? Yeah. I I, I think so. I just okay. All right. So good good point. Um, you know, the, this is you know, it's it's a four month four months minimum before these things are, are ready. Ready, yeah. You know, it's but yes, we could wait if we if we wanted to. So so Gerald entertain a motion either way. I, I just have one question. Councilor McGee. In, in the budget there is nothing expense for cars in the budget? There is no capital outlay expense in the budget whatsoever. Mm. Where's my case? It'll be third year now. It, it's been longer than that. Every oh, no, year, every year, it's every year, Mike that. Sullivan. It never was any. It, and before that, there was always a. There, there is a five-year capital outlay re, um, wish list of all departments that both the you know last year and I'm, I'm guessing it's going to be shared with us this year at budget time um, when we get to it. You know, from the mayor and the auditor, from the department heads of what they need, but they do not put it in. The uh, the budget because typically it's been coming from free cash or other sources. Uh, this is the first time I can think of where we've been requested to use stabilization. And of course, the issue is: is this day-to-day -day operations or is this one-time emergency? I'm not suggesting it's either one. Subject to opinion. The motion is to table it. There a second. Second. Motion is the table. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. Motion to the table passes three to one. And if necessary, we'll revisit as quickly as we can. Um, 
And my, my concern is, is the, the cruisers, but my other concern is trying to get it out of stabilization, I think is not gonna be easy from some, some votes, which I understand and appreciate. I'm not being critical. The last one we have, uh, the cease listener was here at the last meeting. Uh, we told him we were gonna take up the firefighter contracts this evening, round two. Uh, our administrative assistant did, he also has a transfer request in front of us, did, did email the solicitor, right, Ryan? Yes. And he has no response uh, to date. I did text the solicitor tonight, a little bit late, but to see if uh, he, was, he or someone was coming down. What is before us, there's nothing we can do about, well, we didn't have him for the contract, but what is before us is a request for 2000 $57.63 from pay assistant solicitor, $5,143.27 from pay associate solicitor, total being $7,290 into five different items. Education and training, $1,450.90. Office supplies, $1,500. In-state travel, $750. Dues and subscriptions, $1,500. Litigation, $2,000. The total is $7,290. Uh, Chair will entertain thoughts, questions. Councillor Sullivan. Yeah. On, on every single line item that they looked to transfer the money to, they exceeded last year's budgeted amount. Every single one of education and training, office supplies, in state travel, dues and subscription. They just I, exceeded what they were accepted, and now they come two weeks left in the year and they, they want to transfer something out of there because they just went ahead and exceeded the amount that they were budgeted. And th this is what goes on year after year after year. In the short time I've been here, uh, I, I just say no, time to stop. I, I agree the way you stated that, but if you look at these, these are the items that majority, not all, of the city council cut from the budget, I believe. So we know about litigation, 2000, what's that for? That, I, I don't have any answers other than what I just stated, and, and that's why I kind of hope the city solicitor would be here. I mean, I understand education we, and training. I understand in state travel, I might have to go to Boston or something more. But litigation is, you know, once we approve it for litigation, it, it, it can be for settlements, it can be that type of stuff. And we don't get a heads up on that stuff. For me, I want to know what the, I know it's only $2,000, but what's it going towards mm. um we take I, go, I go back to the one that really burned me in ward six was the guy who put up the smokestack over on pinehurst illegally but we didn't really have an ordinance so we put the ordinance in and then legal requests and money from us for litigation and fees and paid him a settlement cost we had no no say in that matter to me i watch out for that stuff because once we put it out the door we don't have a say anymore. Table it. Table until uh, Tuesday night, if we can come in Tuesday night. Before anybody seconds that, I, I agree, but tabling it here requires two things. It dies here, or we have a two-thirds majority of the city council pull it out of committee, just so you know. Mm -hmm. Got somebody on here to talk. Councilor Bacon for the first time, and then we'll go right around Thank to. Thank you. I would just note, and speaking in support of Councilor Sullivan, all of these items that they want to transfer into our discretionary, they know before they go to a training, they know before they drive somewhere, whether they have the money in the budget or not. And sure, they asked for the money, but we didn't have the money. That's why we cut it. So I don't know why magically in the middle of June, they would think we now have the money. It's pretty clear to anybody watching our meetings that we have serious financial issues in the city. And I don't think these are compelling items and kind of they shouldn't be incurring these expenses if they have no money in their budget. Thank you. Councilor Sullivan. Yeah. So also we were thinking we, we went ahead and slashed their budget, but in fact, in 2017, they only spent in education training $286. We approved 1000 Right, which is uh, three times as much as they had spent in the previous year. And now they've exceeded that by an additional 1,500, 150% over what we told them they could do. 
and make that 300% or 400% over what they had spent the previous year. That's education and training. Office supplies, they had spent $4,000 in 2017. We approved $5,000 for uh, 2018, and they're looking for an additional $1,500. That's $6,500, right? So do the math, that's you know roughly a, over 50, maybe 75% increase over what they spent in 2017. Do the same thing with in-state travel. You do the same thing with dues and subscriptions. They spent $7,300. We approved $6,500. They've gone ahead and spent 7000 So, I'm sorry. 8000 It's exactly that. It's just prove what you want. We'll do what we want. Education and training. I don't. I don't. I think it's important. I don't have an answer um, why it's why it's higher. Um, office supplies. You know that that could be a number of reasons that are legit. In-state travel is a moving target. You know it's not just Boston. That's also what they go to Springfield every sometimes. You know, three out of five days a week, and they don't know when they're always know when they're going if something is continued or cases continued. Uh, dues and subscriptions. I, there are some dues and subscriptions. Such as I'm not an attorney, but Mass, not Mass Law. What's the big one? Lexus Nexus. Lexus. Yeah. Yeah. That is extremely crucial to crucial to a law department. I think Councilor McGee said the one that interests me the most is litigation, and, and I think that's the questions that you know we really need to answer. But I will say this: this is not a request from free cash stabilization. It's within their budget. And they're asking to move their budget around to finish the year. Be it, it's late in the year. We received this on June 5th. The request was made on May 15th, according to what I have in, in, with us. Um, so I, I don't, I have questions about some of where it's going and what, the, what you know, just to uh, more clarify. But I don't have a problem with them moving monies around in their budget to uh, to finish the year out. Councilor McGee. Yeah, the only issue I have, and it's been raised before, and I think it's the right way of viewing it, is we allocate money in a budget for certain things, which would be uh, pay assistant solicitor, or associate solicitor, of which whether it was full, you know, filled towards the end of the year or not. Therefore, there's a little left over, or someone leaves, there's a little left over in the budget. That really is a, a money that we allocate for that position. If it's not going to be used, it should go back into the free cash to then be used for something else. Here, Councilor Sullivan raises the point. You're allocated X, you went over that amount, so now you're trying to go back and find money somewhere else to then pay for it. That's the type of stuff you either come back to the council and say, hey, look, I have to go over it. Can I request this? They did it through the mayor. It's once again last minute coming into us. I view the money not being transferred inside the budget or inside the, in the department. I see it as money that should be going back to free cash to then come back out for a request. And it's not the type of money I want to spend when we said in the budget, you're only getting X. And they've gone over that without any type of justification for it so for me um, I'm not going to vote for this one I have the problem with the litigation but two I have the problem with going over what was allocated without um, any justification at all so to me I'd make a motion to deny it any further discussion Councilor Bacon thank you Mr. President and I would just uh, remind the committee that this year our free cash came in at 1.5 we are facing a $2.3 million deficit in the budget that we have to deal with at our budget hearings, which is, I think, worse than last year. So anything going back into free cash this year is critical to retain in the free cash. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I started looking at the budget, and there's no way we cut 2.3 million out of this budget without some serious pain. I don't know if you guys have started going through it line by line, but I have, and this is 
not going to be a fun year. Not that last year was, but we ended up plugging the hole, and what did we have left? Not even a quarter of a million of dollars to get through the year. So whatever we have, we can't be spending it to beat the June 30th date. We need to save it for next year. And I don't know about you guys, but that $900,000 figure from the 142 on that contract scares me, and it's not in the budget. All that contract expense is not in the budget. That is a $2.3 million deficit. At least 200000 of that contract's not even before us yet. I, Bellamy's saying yes. If you, if you could at the mic, yeah. The longevity. I believe she's exactly right. The longevity the, expense. The longevity right, expense. Is not in the budget. The sick leave expense, that didn't come to me till after we'd put the budget together. They're not in the so budget. So what the budget has is all the salary stuff, the 642000 or $671,000. But the other is not in there yet because we didn't have it in time. Yep. So so the real deficit is more like 2.6 rather than 2.3. Yeah. It's bad. And... I don't know how you're gonna. So the so the deficit has gone up basically a million dollars, and our taxes have only gone up three hundred thousand. What we're projecting, we're hoping actually from what Tony said tonight, we might get a little bit more. What we won't know till September. So so you know, how are we gonna pay for that nine hundred thousand dollars? And I will I will remind you that eighty percent of the budget is people. So the only way to make a huge cut in the budget is to cut people. People. That's my that's my speech for the evening. <laughs> right, and it, I've been waiting all night to give that speech. Well, right, and in other budget debates that we've had, I've asked the department heads, "What do you want? More bennies and money and perks and time off, or do you want to keep your staff? Because that's what it's coming down to. You're gonna have the few making more, or many keeping their jobs." It's, pretty simple. I mean, I'm not saying it's easy. It's not easy. It's awful. But it's straight math. I mean, I, you know, it's tough. This, What's that? Uh, we do. Um, with everything said, and I do appreciate it, um, just again, my thoughts are this is money within a budget. Um, it's a department head who is brand new to the budget process, our city solicitor being uh, his first term, his first really full year, about to be his first budget request coming up. And, and I think, you know, that coupled with um, Bellamy doing a great job, but we had a brand new auditor throughout most, through part of the fiscal year. And I, and I think I, I appreciate what our department heads go through. And in the scheme of things, this $7,000 is tidying them up. Some things, I'm guessing, that have already, that have already, that are being billed, not being ordered. And that's, I'm talking about Jews and subscriptions. I'm sure the in-state travel goes to somebody who works for the city. Um, office supplies, if you're asking for it now, that pretty much, much means that you've already purchased it. I agree. You can't spend money you don't have, but again, brand new solicitor, two different auditors throughout the course of the year, learning the ropes, it's money, $7,000 within the budget being juggled around to balance the checkbook. Most of us um, do that at home and mm. I don't have a problem with that, but chair's ready to vote. I just want to, Mr. Pr uh, Chairman, just want to make a stand, I, I agree. I, and I, I really respect my colleagues in saying that, you know, this money should go back into free cash, but um, these expenses are there, and, and I believe this, this department head is looking for this. He's not here tonight, but, uh, you know, the only slight question I have is the litigation, but I, I think all the other expenses are, are something that's been coming up every year, and it's not like they just brought it out this week. I think he said May 15th was requested, so that was, you know, about a month ago. Um, so I, I'm on the... Uh, on board with approving this transfer within the uh, within his department. So, for purposes of uh, taking a vote, the chair will recognize the easy motion to adopt the order or to recommend it be adopted by the council. Any further discussion? I'll second that. 
All those in favor? Aye. Aye, aye. All those opposed? No. no. Okay. Motion is defeated two to two. That motion will go to the full city council as, as a recommendation to deny. No questions? Okay. Brian, you got that? Yeah, why would it go to deny? Because it didn't pass. <clears throat> You know, we don't, we don't, keeping in committee doesn't, it's not a motion to table. It's, a, you know, it's the committee has spoke its piece. It's a split decision. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we're, I'll make that report. We have a split decision from the finance yes, committee right. next, uh, next week. <laughs> <laughs> Councilor Bacon. And an old decision. Hey, Jordan, can I just um, put out a point of information relative to the contract? Yes. Should have made yes, earlier. Yes, under discussion, it's open, yes. But I, but I didn't. Um, it was roughly five years ago that I worked with a number of counselors to tighten up our residency law because there was a loophole in it that said the chief could allow the people to move the staff to move out of the city if they had an undue hardship. That loophole was used so that half, if not more, of the people in the department moved out of the city. Roughly five years ago, we tightened up that loophole so that people could not be granted the ability to move out of the city. Now, the statement was made tonight that the contract has always said what the contract says. Five years ago, we tightened up the ordinance. There was no discussion of contract language that superseded the ordinance. Law department sat in this room when we rewrote it and closed the loophole. There was never any opinion before us that we could not ch tighten up the loophole in the ordinance because the contract superseded our law. So I would just ask people to consider that, that now we're getting a new opinion that flies in the face of all the other work we've done relative to this matter. So I just ask for your consideration of it. And this is the only vehicle we have to deal with it. So thank you. On that as well, um, Joe, not so much about the residency, but for um, when someone retires from the city, we passed an ordinance that said if you retire in January, you don't get the whole year for vacation and sick days added into your buyout. Well, the response from personnel was, sorry, although you have an ordinance, we're still going to pay out for that stuff simply because of these contracts. So once again, if someone is smart, they can wait retirement up until January. <coughs> at that point, they get the full year payout. That to me, we closed that. Now the response is, whether it's residency, whether it's vacation buyout at retirement, that all goes by the wayside. Your ordinance is moot because of these bargainings. You can't do that. So it just happened with another employee that I found out about. We have to either redress these things or, as we all know, we can't negotiate terms. But if we approve something, that's, that's what it all comes down to, especially the lawsuits against the city. Contracts, you can give anything you want, but it's all subject to an appropriation. If we don't appropriate it, that means we are denying that contract and forcing it back for that area to deal with those problems. Right. That is our barrier. Right. So for me, we have to really start looking at these contracts because the negativity is the numbers coming back. We just can't afford things anymore. That's a, a good point. And, and I, all I know is, and I don't know how the city does it, Bellamy, but the way it's the way it's done where I come from, it's it's very simple. You know, you're, everything is prorated. You know, you're when you enter into the new year, you you get and you qualify for X amount of vacation time. Yes, that's new year. Is your if you're at whatever level you're at, you get your three weeks, your four weeks, whatever level you're at. But you don't get it. You, get you it. get it incrementally. Yeah. And the federal it's government bigger. does it that way. The state government does it that way. Is you get it by pay period. A little at a time. Yeah. Right, but they're saying if the there contract are, says. From an accounting standpoint, there are two ways of doing it. 
some companies say you earn a vacation in this year and we pay you for it in the following year but that means that they are accruing for it during that first year paying it out in the second year we don't do that we don't accrue for vacation so you're earning your vacation day by day week by week within the current year so if we're paying people three weeks of vacation in January we are not doing the right thing so I'm looking into that because I'm with you Todd that means they haven't earned it. I have it. one for you, Linda. Yeah. Um, a couple of years ago, I looked at every firefighter to see where they lived. Mm -hmm. No more than 30% lived in Hoyoke, live in Hoyoke, or lived in Hoyoke at that particular time. Right, so you don't I have to worry about their boats, guys. They don't live here. I, I'm not worried about their boats. I'm worried about the job they do. And uh, this contract is the same contract the policeman got not too long ago. Two wrongs don't make a right. <laughs> we all forget that. We voted for the blue, and now we don't want to vote for the red. It but it's not the, the same. It is. It's Almost. not the it's same. very close. It is, but in all due respect, it isn't the same. Police have had their lives threatened in the neighborhoods they live in and moved out of concerns for safety of their families. We haven't had those. Uh, no, I wasn't talking about residency. Oh. I have a different opinion on residency, oh. and I, oh, I, I appreciate I'm sorry. yours. I'm sorry. I was talking about money. money. Oh, okay. I, appreciate, I, I was talking I, about I don't residency. Agree, I don't agree with the residency argument, but I appreciate the residency argument, and that's. I just have a different way of looking at it. But no. I, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't. I was I, talking about money. I don't disrespect yeah. the job. My my arguments has been: if you got the job because you live here, don't work it a year and move out. And tell us how much you love Holyoke, but you live everywhere else. Okay. That's all. We, we do have to do this. I know we're doing this in an open meeting, but we have also left un, no city solicitor, no firefighters, and um, we are going to do this again next Tuesday. So, yeah. <laughs> I understand. I, I take it we're about to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Mike, did you want to say something? Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. I haven't said much all night. But. Well, I know, but there's nobody here. I, I, well, the, the public's still public listening. No, I, I, would, I would think. The, you know, the residency thing is one thing, but once again, the only way we, the only vehicle we have is to deny funding if we don't like the contract. And we can't negotiate it. Way to send it back. The one thing that really sticks with me is that per this agreement, we're giving them a 4% increase in exchange for random drug and alcohol testing policy, all right? Not because it's competitive with local towns, not because a cost of living adjustment, because they're agreeing to drug testing. This, this is for their own safety, their own good, the good of the public. A milk truck driver for hood I, I've got a commercial driver's license, and there's a lot of other fields out there. You don't submit to random drug testing. You're fired. You don't get paid extra for it. That's your job. You have to do that. And if I go to the uh, number 30, what do we agree to here? Isn't even isn't even good. It's only 40% of the force per year, and it's by random. That means a guy can go three to five years, maybe more, if he's lucky without ever being tested and only 10% per quarter. That's what's in this policy. So that's what we're agreeing to if we fund this. Chair, we'd love to hear that motion. Motion to adjourn. Second, Second. all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed, we stand adjourned.
Peace.